Hello and welcome to episode number six of the Artisan Traveller podcast. We are here at the brand new restaurant called Norma, a Sicilian look at Italian food with its chef proprietor, Mr. Ben Tish. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Good. It's uh, kind of surreal to be here amongst all these huge names and you are a big name, aren't you, really? Well, I don't know about that, but I mean, I suppose in my little chef world, I'm well known and, um, you know, Norma's had some initial success and excitement so yeah i mean you know it's yeah it, we 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 norman's doing okay at the minute so yeah it was like five five weeks open now yeah it's our fifth week we're in our fifth week uh, of proper operation um and yeah we are still tightening some nuts and bolts behind the scenes as we will continue to do but business we've been we've, we've, we've hit the ground running it's been very very busy that's amazing to hear so you've gone the Sicilian direction for this one Is yeah 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 that's right I mean I've um, it's not a new necessarily a new thing for me I mean I've always been interested in well Mediterranean cuisine is the overarching style for me um, and then you know I've looked I've gone down the Spanish route Italian route and this and that but I, I think you know more time I've, I've spent in Italy I probably go to it, Italy at least once a year um, I've gravitated south and become fascinated by the difference in the culture and food culture and architecture and general culture there, um, uh, 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 you know, and with its Arabic kind of influences that you find in that. Wood. So, and yeah, in the last few times I've been to Sicily, I just really kind of fell in love with it all over again. So decided that would be the good angle for a restaurant. That's a really good idea because Sicilian food seems to be coming on trend a bit now. I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it at its heart, it's very. It's very, very I mean, simple I mean, food. I mean, it's very peasant oh, yeah. food, you know, and, it, you know, not much, you know, not much kind of money there, um, in, you know, or not, much, not not much money, but I don't know, the infrastructure there is quite tr- you know, tricky, and so they just have really have to live hyper-locally, you know, so if you don't live on the coast, you don't eat fish, you know, it's, just, it's quite as simple as that, and if you're you're inland, you don't eat, you know, you know what I mean? It's exactly. it's that, 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 that that's how they operate, and it's all about, you know, very heavily relied on pasta and um, things like that. So it's very peasant-like food. So I just wanted to do uh, an elevated version of that, I suppose, and add my own twist. It's not authentic by any means. Do you find that in your trips to Italy that it's so different, the food there, in terms of quality than we get kind of back here? But we, we get fantastic Italian food in this country, mm. but because everything is literally so fresh mm. from the places such as, you know, Naples and yes. Tuscany and yeah. obviously Sicily as well. Yeah. yeah, it's very difficult to replicate. You know, you go on holiday to Sicily and, you know, you, yeah, you, you have a, an amazing prawn or an amazing tomato and it's the best thing you've ever had, and then you come back here and you really wish you could re- re- recreate that, and you can't, you, 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 I mean, you can't. So, you, be, because you just can't get that quality, it hasn't had the sun baked, you know, two weeks after it's been picked, or, you know, it, you're never gonna get those things. So I think what, it, what I, 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 restaurants that try to do that, I don't think are, are ultimately gonna be disappointing, you know. So I think it's about doing a, a, a spin uh, uh, on on Sicilian food or Italian food that is, you know, we'll use the best stuff that we can get in the UK as opposed to the best, you know, we do use some Sicilian, Sicilian products, but we'll rather use UK products that are the best and give them a Sicilian angle. Yeah, I mean, we've got the, the best shellfish in the world reportedly in this country. We've got the best shellfish in the world, um, no, 100%. We've got, I, I mean, I think we've got the best meat in the world. I mean, a lot of our, you know, our, a lot of, veg, a lot of things now, um, like, that are grown down south, um, you know, talking like Cornwall, you know, and, and Devon, you know, we, we get, we've got the most amazing um, uh, little pumpkins that are grown via uh, Natura, which is a really beautiful um, wholesale fruit and vegetable that we use. They get a lot of stuff in Sicily, but they also have their own kind of cooperative farms down in Cornwall where it's a bit warmer and they're, they're just growing the most amazing kind of like Italian style courgettes and trombetta, uh, trombetta courgettes, cabanero, but yeah, cut pumpkins and, and all sorts of things. So we're looking at, we're looking at inward, yeah. That's fantastic. So your restaurant, your previous restaurant to this was at the Stafford? Yeah, well, no, I'm so, I'm so, no, no. So my, my kind of role for there is culinary director. Um, nice. And yeah, and I oversee the food F&B at the, the, the Stafford Hotel, which is about 20 minute walk that way in St. James's. Um, and yeah, there is, uh, I oversee the American bar, which is fantastic cocktail bar. And we do a Mediterranean style sharing plate menu there. Very good for drinking and snacking. And then there's the Game Bird restaurant, which is 
uh, a British restaurant, um, kind of elevated, kind of classics, and there's a little bit of French thrown in there as well. But we do a lot of table service, table start, table like theatre, and you know we do crepes suzettes at the table. We do beef Wellington trolley. We do um, we have a smoked fish trolley. Um, the, the waiter comes and cards it all at the table. But it's done. It's not done with pomp. It's done. It's done in quite a cool contemporary way. Um, and yeah, and we do classics. We've got chicken Kiev on there. We've got fish and chips. But it's all done like kind of well, you know. I was going to say, is it hard to kind of go back into the Spanish way of thinking when you've gone from a modern British kind of mindset? Or uh, is no, it easy? no, no. It's easy. I mean, it, it, what well, one is, it, it, yeah, it's very clear that my passion and it, my my thing is is Mediterranean cuisine. So you know. We have an amazing exec chef over at the um, at Stafford who reports into me, but his passion is the Game Bird, which is the British restaurant over there. So he kind of leads on the the menu there. I have input because obviously I know, you know, I'm, I'm a chef, so I know about different cuisines. But it's much more about my role is much more about direction and strategy. And I'll taste something and tell you if I think it needs a bit more. I'll look at something and think. Mm, that could make, be made to look much cooler if we did this, this kind of thing. But ultimately, he's in charge of putting the menu together, and then I just critique it and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, here at Norma and at the American Bar, that's my, it's my creative, my my menus. Did you start off um, in the classics, of, or did you start in like a, a Spanish direction? No, no, I started very much classic French, um, and for many years, kind of cooked in the. You know, there was only really when I was going through the ranks, there was only really one type of restaurant that was good kind of really I and mean, it sounds a bit weird but they were all kind of like modern european slash kind of french restaurants you know you didn't get amazing spanish restaurants or kind of amazing um italian restaurants um it was more um yeah it was just what broad kind of modern europe <laughs> is stuart is the ceo of the company yeah, he's, Find, finds it highly amusing. <laughs> yeah. Press coverage. Uh, yeah, press coverage. Um, and uh, so that was the only one type of restaurant. And then, as I at, through the ranks, basically coming up through the ranks, it was working at these modern European restaurants and so on. And then the company that I worked for decided to open uh, an Italian restaurant. Um, and uh, everybody's like, "Wow, that's a bit weird." You know, Italian restaurant. The only ones that we even knew were like kind of you local trattorias that did, you know, like pizzas and pasta and that kind of thing. But they've got this amazing chef over um, who'd worked also with Giorgio, Giorgio Locatelli. And I went to work there just for a bit as like a stage and uh, to check it out. And I just fell in love with the simplicity of the food and the focus on ingredients, which we never really had before, and seasonality and all those things. And yeah, I mean, he, um, and, and that's, that's where it started for me. And I thought, right, this is the direction. I don't want to go down the Michelin, Michelin star route and this, that. I want to do sim simple, more simple style of food, but done really well and all about produce and flavour. Yes. So the first time I saw you was in, uh, sorry, the first time I saw you on TV was MasterChef in 2012 when a couple of the contestants came to do uh, an afternoon's work at the Salt Yard. Yeah. And that kind of, that really did blow my mind because I'd never seen tapas like that. And I'd been going to Spain, I'd probably say a couple of times previous to that show yeah and as soon as I'd seen that that was it like I, my mind was just filled with ideas I how do you how do you get that sort of I suppose the soul of Spain into a restaurant in London like that yeah I mean I just guess it's having some experience traveling there and um, looking at you know traveling and checking places and just taking influences you know some of the stuff a lot of stuff that we were doing at Salt Yard was not authentic by any means there was a few authentic bits thrown in there like Padron peppers and this but a lot of the stuff was my idea of, of, of tapas, and I think that's a healthy thing to have is, you know, if you're, you know, I probably get shot down by a load of Italians or, or, or Spaniards for this, but, you know, the whole Italian thing of it's not, you know, it's not, um, it's not how mama makes it, that kind of thing. I, I don't think that's a bad thing because, you know, Italians are very fixated with their traditions and that's how it's done and there isn't. A leeway. Do you know what I mean? That's when you go to Italy. A lot of restaurants have the same, essentially the same menus. Yeah. You know, done maybe slightly differently, but everybody's doing this. Everybody's doing cotonaki. Everybody's doing that. Do you know what I mean? And because that's what Mama used to do. Yeah. And it kind of limit. It's a limitation, I think. And so, going there with an open mind. Yes, taking the the, the nice bits and looking at the ingredient. Oh, they did that, and then come back, and then then you really haven't got any uh, any other thing to go on apart from your creativity. And I think that's where it comes from.
and yeah, I read books and I do this and I get inspiration from many places, but um, yeah, I just about having no nothing really to compare to, if you know what I mean. Yeah, do you think it's kind of becoming more acceptable now to evolve a cuisine like Italian? So, for example, uh, Massimo Vettore is doing that in yeah. his restaurant, yeah, and it's kind of having a knock on effect, especially in the Michelin star scene in Italy. Yeah, yeah, very, but yeah, yeah, very, very much. So. I think it's definitely acceptable, and I think you know, I'd refer more back to the UK. Where I, and, and London, particularly. I mean, that's where I work and live, so that's kind of what my focus is really. But there's some excellent Italian, Italian ethos restaurants, which this is kind of in a way um, where the ethos of Italian food is, as I say, about you know using, well, using pasta as a base for a, a few of the dishes, but you know, using uh, hyper, you know, hyper seasonality, treated very simply. Um, and you know, and there, and and, and uh, you know, I think um, like there's a restaurant called Luca. Um, they they call, there's a, it's called Britalian. That's the kind of this cuisine that's emerging. Yeah. And you know, whereas you know, rather than you know using to, uh, tomatoes from 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 Italy, they're using using tomatoes from the UK, and but doing it in a in kind of you know Italian methodology and things like that. And I think that's. The, more the direction. There's lots of there's lots of lots of Italians opening now, run by British chefs, who have maybe not even you know not not even worked in Italy, just gone and spent some time there and read some books and so on. Um, and I think that's a very healthy thing that's happening. So speaking of books, um, you uh, the first book was a Salt Yard, uh, a book was for the Salt Yard group, I should say. Yeah. Uh, was that already in the pipeline pre Master Chef, or was that as a result of maybe a um, no, I think that was already in the pipeline, actually. Um, just something we, 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 we were really keen to do. Um, and it was, a, you know, it was a lovely book to do that. I mean, it really was. We got, um, you know, his recipes, obviously, but we also got some input. Hi there. Right. Um, we also got some input from um, journalists and friends and food people that we know to write essays and things um, on... On, on on us and on on food related stuff and it was just a really nice book to have it's out of print now unfortunately but um it was really good and then uh after that we did uh grill smoke barbecue yes, which was uh, one of my favorites mm, which was based around mb yard restaurant which is one of our salt yards which is kind of cooking over charcoal and wood and i think that was a lovely book quite groundbreaking i think at, at the time you know it's obviously cooking over charcoal and wood is you know, it's ubiquitous at the minute, you know, but I think back in the day when we started that, we were one of the first to do that. Yeah. And then definitely write a book about it. Especially in that style as well, because <laughs> um, the sort of the Spanish barbecue or the Italian kind of barbecue, no, yeah. one, no one really knew about it. Yeah. Well, certainly I didn't know about it until I yeah. probably went to Argentina and by chance again, you know, the book falls onto the shelves and, you know, I'm cooking food that I never thought I'd be able to cook yeah. before. Yeah, 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 100%. And, you know, you're opening it to the masses. So, yeah. So I did that and then, you know, enjoyed writing. And then my last book, which came out this year, actually, Moorish, um, which was, again, something I've wanted to write for ages. And um, that was just, a, yeah, basically about continuing the Mediterranean theme, but focusing on the South and then the Moorish, the Moorish North African in, Arabic influences um, that you find in that part, those parts of the world. And, and that's kind of what this restaurant's based. Yeah, yeah, part of it, yeah, certainly, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think, you know, this is kind of, I seem to have found a bit of, I, I don't know, I like, I just feel really very comfortable where I am food-wise at the minute. So I think it's um, it's just a, it's just been a natural progression. There might be, you know, in three years' time, there might be another part of the Mediterranean that I just happen to fall on or fall in love with. But it will always be linked. It's not like all of a sudden I'll start cooking Japanese food or, do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's the Mediterranean is the common thread. Yeah. What would you say was the first yeah, kind of place, well. either Spain or Italy, that really drew your attention to food? I would say um, probably. Sp I mean, I think I know what's coming here. Or well, do, do you think San Sebastian? I was going to say yeah. San Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think yeah, no, I was at San Sebastian, and also yeah, and and a particular trip I went on San Sebastian, and then also around the Basque country, around the surrounding area where. You know, went to a few restaurants. Um, Echi Barry, which is a, a amazing grill restaurant. That's what spurned. That's what got the thought process about MBR. It's this place called Echi Barry, where they cook everything over charcoal and wood. 
just out. It's in between um, Bilbao and San Sebastian. But yeah, San Sebastian haven't been for, haven't been for a few years actually, but it's a mind blowing place. It's for food prob- people, yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's mind blowing. It's probably the only place I can think of where the quality is just so consistent through from the humble tapas bar to the three Michelin style restaurants. Yes, exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and bars that just focus on one thing, like you know, the, the, I think it's Gambara or whatever it is, just tapas, but it's just mushrooms. So all their tapas are based around mushrooms. Yes. So there's one that's just when I was there, anyway. There's one that was just everything was anchovies, different tapa. Or you know, pinch or whatever it is, but it was all anchovies. So I mean, he doesn't get more foodie than that, really. Yeah. The fact that actually the best dish I've ever had on my travels was in a small bar in uh, in San Sebastian, and it was the weirdest sounding thing you probably ever. It was octopus grilled with a raspberry sauce and coriander oil. I think it was. Mm. Shouldn't work on paper, really, but it was just ridiculously good. And it's it's things like that that I suppose make us more open-minded as, as yeah, dining yeah. back. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Those um, Spain, Spain have definitely Spain is definitely far more creative than Italy as as a whole, and the chefs there and the movements and it's, it, definitely. But I think slowly Italy is kind of coming round to that, coming round to that notion. They're probably where Spain was probably. I don't know, 15 years ago, I would say, on a kind of creative level. Definitely. Do you have a, a favourite region of Italy to, I know we're sitting outside of your Sicilian yeah. restaurant, but... Yeah, I would say, okay, so yes, obviously the south and Sic- you know, Sicily is, and I love Puglia, and yeah, I do like the south, but also, equally, I like, you know, I like, I love Piedmont, you know, I've, I've spent quite a lot of time in Piedmont, and, you know, seeing the winter with the truffles and all that kind of thing, I mean, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, lots of mushrooms and all that. It's amazing. Fantastic. One of the most underrated areas I found was um, Liguria. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, amazing olive oil from Liguria, yeah. yeah. Genoa yeah. and just the restaurants there. Like the, the basil seems to be a dark green. It's not the sort of stuff we get in the shops here or in the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another level, isn't it? Hence hence why they're so... That's Pesto is their thing, isn't it? Yes. Genoa, just the Pesto is... Genoa is the originator of Pesto, so, yeah. Absolutely incredible place. I mean, where do you like to go to eat, especially in London? Where's where's the if you have a rare night off? I know you're yeah. extremely busy. Yeah, yeah. Um, where do I? I mean, I, I like to go to. I, I mean, it sounds a bit of a cliche, but a lot of chefs say this sort of. But it's, I do look for simplicity. You know, if there's a restaurant, new restaurants opened, and you know, I, 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 I don't know. I like I like simple things where I know what I'm going to get is just well cooked, and you know, not not particularly challenging. Um, it sounds a bit boring, but that is what I want when I'm off. You know, if I've got a holiday, then I'll perhaps be a bit more e- experimental. I'm going to Mexico in a couple of weeks uh, to um, Tulum, 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 and um, it looks amazing. And there's a couple of restaurants there that are in the world's 50 best. And there's one that's just, every, you know, it looks amazing. It's very eco-friendly and there's no, they don't use any gas or electric or anything and everything's cooked out on the beach but it's in one it's meant to be amazing so i'm going to go going to go there but i'm on holiday but in london i don't know i'd go to you know somewhere like the walsley or uh, scots or Sheikis, where i know i'm just going to get amazing piece of fish or meat just cooked really well um you know, uh, you know Ita- other italian restaurants um i, I like luca um which is owned by the same guys who've got, uh, got the clove club um, Cloak Clubs, I, I think, is the best Michelin star restaurant in London. Um, I just think they're, I don't know why they haven't got two stars. They're, I think they're, they're incredible. Have, again, I haven't been for a while, but yeah, I've got fairly simple tastes when I go out. I just want to be, you know, I want a nice glass of wine, nice, simple, well seasoned, well executed piece, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, I've also started to gravitate away from the Michelin star yeah. scene a bit and embracing at the moment, um, not just London's, but the street food scene around the UK. It yeah. just seems yeah, to be yeah, 100%. flying. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, again, you know, I, I, I haven't, probably two or three years ago, I'd kind of, you know, was, was following that. But yeah, you can you can get amazing food on street food. Like there's one over on Rupert Street, a uh, street market that's there every day, and Berwick Street as well. And some of the stuff they're producing, you know, and I walk down there, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, it's why would you... You know, yeah, for a, a fraction of the price, and it's just exp- you know creative and looks amazing, and you know there's queues around the block for it. So yeah. it's definitely, I think people have got the confidence more now that they've seen you know street food coming back from obviously places like Thailand. Yeah, obviously your experience, I'd imagine it in Mexico. 
and people have now got, they seem to be more confident actually eating street food in this country. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, no, 100%, yeah, I mean, it's, and it's, you know, it's a fun thing to do, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's a very social thing to do, I think, you know, and I think that's what's, um, that's, that's, that's kind of what's, what, what makes it nice, I think, you know, and that's, again, the rise of small plates and things like that. It's just a, such a, a fun and convivial way to eat, you know, so I think that's, that's dead right. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. It's a wonderful restaurant, so big plug for Norma. Thank, thank you very much. Get yourself down here. Um, just, yeah, thank you very much. Absolute and pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Brilliant. Thank you. So uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, um, there'll be plenty more like it. Please subscribe on YouTube if you're listening. Uh, also on iTunes, you can subscribe. Drop us a comment, share, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Thank you.